For me, 2019 is the year of the drugstore. I know that there was a ton of high-end releases, releases, especially in palettes and foundations. Oh my gosh, can you guys believe how many came out? But I have a tendency to kind of steer towards drugstore, but I do have some high-end favorites that I absolutely love. Now, some of these that I'm gonna share with you, I've loved for a long time. Others of them I did just find in 2019. So we're gonna get right into this. Please give this video a thumbs up if you're excited to see all of my favorites videos because I do have a whole bunch coming. I have another favorites of palettes and I then I'm also going to have skincare and I'm also going to have my drugstore favorites. So I got a whole lot lined up for you guys and I hope that you are enjoying it. Make sure you give it that thumbs up so that I know that and comment down in the comment section, is there a high-end product that you feel like, I just can't live without that. So we're gonna get right into this. One of the things that I absolutely love that was released this year is the Anastasi Beverly Hills Eye Primer. This is a mini and I have used this almost every day since I got it when it was released during the summer and I've barely made a dent in it. This is gonna last me a very long time. I love this stuff. I prefer it over all of my drugstore, which is saying a lot because I do try a lot of drugstore eyeshadow primers, but this one has the tendency to be able to just completely erase any thing that you have on your eyelids, whether it is if you have freckles or redness or veins or anything like that, it completely does away with all of those, not to mention the fact that it grips eyeshadow like no other. So and for me, this is something that even though it may be $13 for this little tube, it is highly worth it to me. For foundations, there were two that stood out for me that I tried that I absolutely loved. The first one is the Tarte Face Tape Foundation. I love this stuff. I think it makes my skin look so perfected, so smooth, and it has a great wear time. It also is uh, medium coverage, but if you want more than that, you can build it up in the areas that you need to. And I just think it looked really skin-like, which I absolutely loved. And that's exactly the same thing that I felt like I got out of the Zoeva. Uh, the difference in the two of these, this tart is just a little bit more mattifying than the Zoeva. The Zoeva was a natural, almost radiant foundation for me. Super long wearing on this one too, and totally perfected my skin. I absolutely think this is just wonderful. I used it over and over again. I was able to get my color really close in the Zoeva. The face tape, I did have to use a little bit of my blue mix in to make it a little cooler, but the Zoeva was absolutely perfect and wear time on it was fantastic, had absolutely no breakthrough. So I really love both of those foundations. Next, I have some powders. The Hourglass Veil Powder is such a pretty perfecting powder. I feel like this is one of the prettiest powders I've ever seen and it's so finely milled and it has a, just a tiny bit of a yellow cast to it. I've got a ton on my finger there, but it really does feel like it is silk on the skin. I have duped this one out in drugstore, but at the same time, because I did buy it to get a dupe of it because it was a cult classic, I have really enjoyed using it. I think it's a great powder. I think it helps your makeup stay. It just absolutely blurs out your face and makes it just look so pretty. One thing I do know is that you can get a mini in this now, I believe. So. Also, as always, I will make sure that I throw up in the text right here, which product it is and how much it is. And if there is a mini available, I will make sure I throw that up too. And then down in the description box, everything will be linked below. Yes, they are affiliate links. So if you do go ahead and click through, I do appreciate your support so much. It does help my channel grow. So the next powder that I wanna talk about is one that has one specific thing to it. And it's why I go back to it over and over again. It's the It Your Skin But Better CC Airbrush Perfecting Powder with an SPF of 50 plus. It says sheer to full coverage finishing veil and it really is that that's a huge name all the claims on there i know i have mine in light and i really like this for touch-ups during the day if i have somewhere that i want to go where i want my skin to look exceptionally smooth and you know beautiful through the day this is a powder that never fails one of the things that i really appreciate putting this in my purse and using it during the day is the SPF in it. So, you know, you're supposed to reapply your SPF during the day and I can just take a brush, 
pop it into there and just apply it really quickly and know that my skin is still protected from the sun. So that is a wonderful thing about this powder and it's why I probably will continue to repurchase it until the drugstore comes up with a powder that has some SPF in it. Now finishing powder that I've had for such a long time, but I love this so much. This is the Lancome Absolute, Absolute Powder. This is a finishing powder and it is an absolute golden. The reason that I love it so much is it has this transformative quality to it that just helps your skin look alive and awake. And it's just this beautiful glow that it gives you. It's not a lot of, it's not shimmer. It's not like that. It's just a pretty glow that it gives your skin. And you're not going to be able to see that very well on camera, but it just brightens your skin and makes it look so pretty. And the thing about this powder is that it is not golden. It is more along the lines of a peach pink hue, which I really like about it. And it was kind of deceiving when I first got it. I was like, why isn't this more golden? But I do really like it. I love the way it makes my skin look when I put it on. And I just think it's an exceptional product. Another product that was very new to me this year is the Laura Mercier Glow Powder. This is a powder that you would not want to buy and get it just to set your makeup because this will make you look like a shiny disco ball. It is very, very glowy. And I'll show you, hopefully it will show up on my arm as I do it here. But what's nice about it is I do use this as a highlighter and I think it's so pretty as a highlighter and hopefully that's gonna come across. I have it on my cheeks today, just as a really natural highlighter. And I think that it is one of those ones that even though it does have that little bit of glow, it doesn't have any like particles in it. It doesn't show any texture. It just is a really finely milled powder, just like the original um, translucent powder from her, but it has that bit of shiny glow to it. So I actually just kind of dust it across the high points and use it like that. I think it's very pretty and I think it's a really nice product, but I definitely would not purchase this for any setting powder whatsoever. And this is the mini one, so you guys know, and this stuff lasts a long time. I actually have the mini one of the regular powder, lasts forever. The next thing I want to talk about is this contour from Sephora. This is in the color Second Chance and you guys, I've already hit pan on it. <laughs> I put it in the high-end video even though I guess this could be borderline either way, but $14, I think it's $14, 12 or $14 for that size just seems like a lot for me. But this to me is my favorite contour of all time. I have had it in so many videos that I've showed you guys how to contour and I just think that this is the absolute perfect color for anybody. Contouring, you want things to be receding. So if I'm going to contour right here, I want to be able to carve out this area right here on my cheek to make me look like I've got a higher cheekbone right here. So the, the receding part of this or the muddy part of this is perfect for contouring. I also use it up here on my hairline because I have such a high forehead with, you know, my hairline is so far back, plus I lost a bunch of hair. So I use it to dust in there and just make a bit of shadow so it doesn't look so bad when you have your hair off of your face like that. And then another little palette that I have been loving is the Smashbox Cali Contour um, Palette. And this has six different products in here. I loved that they gave you, again, that muddy color or the or little bit of a dirty brown color where you can contour really well with it. Over here you have this nude blush that is gorgeous when you're wanting to do a brighter eye color. That nude blush goes so well with any eye color you're wanting to do. And then down here is the bronzer and then you get two highlighters in here. And then you get a banana powder over here that's really good if you're one that sets your, your under eyes with any sort of powder. If you guys are hearing some chomping in the background, that's my dog. She's got her bone. She's sitting right by me and she's not going to let that thing go. So I apologize if that's distracting. These highlighters, again, are a lot like the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter where they're not like a BAM in your face highlighter. They're just more of a perfecting powder and these powders in this little palette are so, so buttery. I was blown away by how nice the actual powders in here are. They blend nicely and they just stay on the face forever. And I love that even though it looks like it's a very monochromatic palette, 
this is so diverse in that you could do your whole entire face with it. You could put, you know, this on as a color that you put on your eyes and then do some of the brighter colors on your lid and you know, you're out the door because you've got all of your products in here. So I really do like this. I love traveling with this. It has a really nice mirror in there. I am a stickler for a good mirror. If the mirror distorts, I get really irritated with the product and I don't like it. So this one has a good mirror in it. And this one I would highly recommend if you've been looking for something that has all the products in one. I think it's really good for that. Recently, all we have all kind of made the switch over from matte foundations or matte skin to satin skin. And now it's all about the dewy luminous look. And this spray, this is the Illuminizing Setting Spray from Cover FX, which I've talked about before. This goes such a long ways and it actually has the pearlized products in it. And I love this spray. You can hear that it has a ball in there, and I say this a lot when I show this spray on camera. The ball in there mixes up the product or the pearlized products with the setting spray so that you have it. And it also has a really nice fine spray on it, which I really do appreciate. So I'm gonna try and spray some right here and we'll see if we can get the effect of what it is right there. That effect right there, I don't know if it's coming across on camera or not. It is dried down now. It's a tiny bit tacky, but it's pretty dry. And so it gives you that very soft, luminous glow to your skin without being shiny. And I actually, I've only used this once on camera because when I'm in these lights, it does have a tendency to brighten my face up anyway. And if I wear any of this, I'm gonna be even brighter. But if you have somewhere to go, you're in dim light, you are going to a party, you're going to a wedding, whatever, and you want to look extra special, this is a really, really good product to use and just give you that natural, luminous, dewy looking skin. And I have had this for quite a while and I think I'm only way halfway through the bottle because such a little bit goes a long ways. So I do really like that one. So the only mascara that I ever recommend in any of my videos, unless something comes along that's gonna knock my socks off, I'm going to continue to reach for the benefit they're real. I love this for the bottom lash line. It catches every single hair that I have down there. And it has this little, if hopefully that's gonna come across on camera, it has this little spray across the top of brushes that lets me go in like this instead of going in ver instead of going in horizontal, I can go in vertical with my wand and it catches every single one. It lengthens them like crazy and it makes your lashes look fantastic. Today I'm wearing something else on the top, but on the bottom, that is all about benefit, they're real. This has been my holy grail since it came out. I wanna say it like came out about six years ago, maybe even longer, but I have had a tube in my vanity or in my purse for that long because I absolutely love this stuff. It is one that will not smudge. It is not waterproof, but it is definitely smudge proof, sweat proof. You're not gonna have raccoon eyes at all. So if you haven't tried this before, I really do recommend that you try it. There are ones at the drugstore that you can get that are waterproof that do a pretty good job, but I continue to go back to this. And it lasts me a little bit longer because I only use it on my bottom lash line. And I found that I can you get this size or I can get the mini size and be just as happy. So that's one that has just really made my lashes look a whole lot better all the time. Okay, now I am a drugstore lipstick girl. I feel like if you can't find a lipstick or a lip gloss at the drugstore that is just as good as high end, I would be shocked because they have some fantastic colors there, fantastic formulas. But I do like my certain lipsticks in certain lines. And one of them is the Urban Decay Vice Lipsticks and the other one is the MAC Lipsticks. I think that both of those are so nice. It just depends on what you want. I love the comfort mat that they have in the Vice one. And I actually love all of the finishes, except for I'm not crazy about the sheer ones that each of these have, but I'm gonna show you what they are and we're gonna go through it. This one is called Plum Dandy. This is kind of just my everyday lipstick. It's a more along the lines of a pink lipstick, but it does have a sheen in it. 
and I wear it constantly. And then the next one is kind of along the lines of more of a coral lipstick. And this one doesn't have a sheen to it, but it is a cream. So it's gonna look a little bit shiny there. It is what I have on today on my lips. And that one, I just find that when I want more along the lines of a pinky nude, that this one does so well and it just looks really good. And then this one right here, when I want to go a little bit more on the show my lips up, um, I want more, attention drawn to my lips. I love this one called Captive from Urban Decay. I think that's so pretty. That one is a cream as well, not got any frost in it. And then recently, I don't know, a month or two, this one is called Back Talk from Urban Decay. And that is more along the lines of a matte formula, but boy, that is so comfortable. Now I am a pinky lipstick gal or plum or purple. I love all of those colors. I'm not more along the lines of of the coral colors or the peach colors, but you guys, these are so nice. This one right here that I did at the very last, that is called Back Talk. That is such a beautiful universal color for just about everybody because it is such a neutral color. I think that if you're a warm tone, cool tone, neutral tone, you could really pull that color off. I just think it's one of the prettiest colors that Urban Decay has ever put out. And I just, I really like it a lot. And the formulas on all of these, probably that one from Urban Decay because it is the matte one, probably that one would last longer than any of the others, but you really can't go wrong with any of them. The last two things I'm gonna talk about are lip glosses. Both of these are a volumizing or plumping lip gloss. You guys all know about the Buxom lip glosses. Everybody talks about them. This one is in white Russian. I just think this is one that just gives the lips so much life and it is so pretty. And I, I pop it on and I instantly feel that cooling and I just think it's so gorgeous. And it is pretty clear so you can wear it over top of just about anyone. And then this one from Sephora, again, is a volumizing lip gloss. It is much clearer than White Russian. White Russian has kind of a milky look to it, whereas this one from Sephora has a more clear and just shiny. But I'm telling you guys, if you have been looking for glosses that stay a long time, these two will not disappoint you at all because they just seem to hug your lips. The other thing that I love about lip glosses coming back is that I feel like with my aging lips and that I have lip lines, it doesn't accentuate my lips as much when I have a shiny, pretty lip on. I'm an 80s girl. I'm going to always love my lip glosses no matter what, but these two are really special and I wanted to recommend them to you. So that is everything for today's video. I hope that you did enjoy it. Stay tuned for those other ones that are coming up that are going to be all about the best products of 2019. I do have one more that is the worst products of 2019 and I will be bringing that to you shortly. Thank you all so much for watching today. I appreciate your time and I hope that you do take just a minute to comment down below and tell me what your favorite products of the year were, whether they're high end or not. I would love to hear that from you guys. Hope everybody is happy and well. Take care of yourselves. I will see you all in my next video. Love you. Bye-bye.